Hey guys, Eric here, and welcome to Rant and Review. We're going to be talking about Star Wars, The Acolyte, Episodes 1 and 2. They're both out now on Disney+. Plus. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with the series this far. You've been warned. Let's get into it. So I have to start out by saying, and maybe this is going to spoil the suspense for this entire Rant Review, but what an absolute breath of fresh air for Star Wars, in my opinion, as someone who is like a casual viewer, somebody that's been watching all these projects over the years. I don't know too much about all the lore. I don't know every single character and every bit of history that goes along with Star Wars and the expanded universe. So I'm coming into this just hoping to be entertained. And that's the way I look at a lot of this stuff that we talk about here is I just want to be entertained at the end of the day. And what a breath of fresh air. Let me tell you why. What I loved about these first two episodes, and we're not going to talk spoilers just yet, but what I loved about these first two episodes is the storytelling and the pacing is something that I appreciated as a viewer. And this is something I've loved since the Arrowverse days. And if you're somebody that's been watching me since back then, talking about The Flash, talking about Arrow, you, you'll understand what I'm saying here. So this kind of storytelling where there is a large mystery going on, there's a bigger mystery that you're going to be uncovering throughout the season. It feels rewarding when you get these tiny bits of mystery in the episodes. And as you're watching, you get rewarded for that investment as you're watching the episode. So you, a question gets asked, you think about it, you're wondering about it, and then you get the answer and it feeds into the larger mystery of the whole series. And I love that about the Acolytes. So far, two episodes in, I was engaged the entire time. We were, we were all engaged. We're sitting here watching it. And I, and I honestly was like, I, this is the first series in a while, I think since maybe Andor, where I felt like I was sitting there watching something that I could really get invested in. And as a viewer, I was going to feel fulfilled walking away from the show. No cap on that at all. I absolutely loved these first two episodes. Let's talk a little bit about some of the characters here. I have a page open now. I'm still learning everybody. So we have the main two characters, which is part of the mystery we get, which is uh, Osha and May. Now, at first, you don't know. Like, I'm like, is this the same person? Is there some kind of like dual personality going on? What's happening here? The two characters are played by Amandala Stenberg. I think it's Stenberg is their last name. And absolutely immediately connected with this character because of the acting of Amandala in both of these roles. It's so dynamic. And you feel very personally connected to them because they they have this ease in their personality and there's a very clear dynamic uh between these two characters as you're watching the episodes and you're kind of getting into it one of them is a badass assassin and you get that right at the beginning of the first episode we go in super punchy the clips have already been online i think they released i think maybe the whole battle or maybe a portion of the battle between her and indara and I loved it, loved it. It looked dynamic. We get into it right away. You're like, okay, it's going to be action. It's going to be some mystery. Sign me up. So absolutely love that. And from there, we we jump through the story at such a good pace because we start meeting each character and you feel like you're not spending a ton of time filling in the gaps. So we get that quite often in these shows where there's a lot of talking and dialogue to fill in the gaps. You don't get that very much in so far in the first two episodes. We have some other characters we meet. We have Saul, um, who is a Jedi master. Very cool character. Um, fatherly, teacher-type personality. Uh, obviously very well-versed in the Jedi arts. And mysterious, in a good way. And really excited to see what other secrets are going to be revealed from him. Because he feels a deep connection to both Osha and May, And I think that's really cool. Uh, because, you know, you you can sort of, it, like, as I've grown up watching media, my time in connecting with characters has changed. Like, it used to be like I connect with the younger characters. Now I connect with the older characters. So I love the idea he's playing this older Jedi who sort of feels like a teacher and um, has a lot of secrets and mystery going on. We have the character of Yord, who is another Jedi who is, I guess, in training to be a Jedi master. You'll have to correct me in the comments about that. But I think they're in training. And they are training Geki, Jeki, Geki, I think is that character's name. And they're both working under Saul, trying to sort out this mystery. And I think both of them are really strong. I liked uh, Jeki a little bit more than Yord. Yord is a bit like sort of stoic, sort of um, 
no emotion really. Like I, if I had to compare their character to anything else, it'd be like a Vulcan type character where you can't really get a read on them. And I honestly don't know, you know, how much of that will, those layers will be revealed as we go through the series, but probably the character that I connected with least while watching the first two episodes was Yord. And uh, we get some interesting colors for sabers as well. So curious to see how that's going to play out through the series. We're going to see some other stuff. I know there's like a lightsaber whip thing that we're eventually going to see. So we'll see what happens with that. We also have Indara, which is the character played by Carrie Ann Moss. And unless there's some <laughs> twist coming at some point throughout the season, that character has gone. <laughs> so I don't know if we're going to get flashbacks. Maybe we'll see her again. I have no idea. But um, that character is no longer with us. But I thought she was good, you know, from what we got to see from her. Um, we also have a character of Vernestra, which is a Jedi Master, probably one of the higher Jedi Masters in the temple, who is sort of giving orders to Saul and kind of conducting this whole case. And I, I'm very interested to see if there's some sort of like smoke and mirror element to that character, because I'm getting the vibe from her that there's something happening that she is not being honest about. And I don't know if it's just the way that they're writing the character because it isn't a real person, but the, the actor playing this character is giving off sketch vibes. And so in the back of my mind, I'm thinking there has to be like, a, there's another shoe that's going to drop. It's Star Wars. I mean, I feel like this character's got some sort of insidious stuff going on, but maybe it's just me sort of reading into it because it is Star Wars. And uh, I'm trying to think, what else do we have? We have the mysterious uh, teacher for May that we're not sure who that person is, referred to as he, but we don't know who he is. Now, Star Wars fans that are like super, super fans will probably know, maybe know who that character is supposed to be. So if you have any theories or anything like that, definitely leave it down in the comments below and tell me what your thoughts are on who that mysterious person may actually be. We also get to meet a, uh, briefly meet a Wookiee who is a Jedi. And look, again, I am a casual Star Wars fan. So um, let me know, were there, were there any major Wookiees that were Jedis in Star Wars expanded universe whatsoever. I can't really think of any. I mean, I'm pretty sure I've seen one before. I mean, I feel like I have. Not totally sure. But we're going to meet this uh, Jedi Wookiee in the next episode, I'm guessing. Because when they track down May finally, and she has to escape with this other character. What was this guy's name? Um, I, I believe the character, I don't think we learned his name. Maybe they said it and I just forgot. But there's a guy that works at like a little uh, like a little shop on the planet and um, they're working together. And so they have to escape together to go to Cold Coldar, I think is the name of the planet, where this uh, Wookiee Jedi is. And so I guess that's where we're going next. And um, it's just there's a lot of really dynamic things in this series that I was so impressed with. If I had to like because it is a rant review, so I have to drop some some stuff that I didn't like. I think that there was um, some issues with the film. Maybe it's just, maybe it was for me. Let me know if it was for like this for you guys. But it went from like high def stuff to grainy stuff in the episode. I don't know if anybody else experienced this or not. Maybe it was with the streaming. But it felt like some of the shots looked like HD, like modern Star Wars. And then some of it looked like grainy. I, maybe it was done on purpose, but it happened from scene to scene for me. And so I feel like that's a criticism I could give it. I'm looking for things that I thought about when I was watching the episode that I didn't like. I had a great time watching this episode. And so I'm going to drop my score right now. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. It really, really was that good. And I and this is for both episodes. I think they were both equally as good. The first episode is a little bit longer. I'm not sure how long each episode is supposed to be from, from here on out. But as someone coming into this as a casual Star Wars fan that just really wanted to be entertained, the show did not let me down. The mystery was exciting. I love the idea that we're getting tiny um, amuse-bouche mysteries when we're waiting for our main course. And so that, for me, as a viewer, is really rewarding. I'm absolutely excited about this. I wasn't sure if I was going to love it because I know there was a lot of people obviously here on YouTube saying it was going to be awful and that it was going to be the worst thing ever and that Star Wars is dead and... 
um, I don't know. Sometimes people who claim to be like the diest, hardest fans of something just can't have fun with things anymore. And I get it. People feel the need to gatekeep really, really hard for stuff, but it's absolutely awful. There's so much negative discourse around the show because I really loved the first two episodes. And I would say if you were on the fence about watching it, you already have Disney plus. I'm not going to tell you to, to get Disney plus just for the show, but if you already have Disney plus you like star Wars or you like the idea of something in the star Wars universe being a little bit different from what you've seen before, I would say definitely give the acolyte a watch nine out of 10 can't wait for the next episode. Now it's your turn to tell me that I was completely wrong about everything down in the comments down below, or you can absolutely agree with me. I would love that too. leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to hear me review the acolyte every single week until the end of the season, I'm really excited about, to talk about this. I am so hyped for the series.